Welcome back to Int Plus One channel. This is Carl, and I'm really excited to do this. Now, I know I've got a couple other games going on. What do I have, like six other games going on? That's okay. I really want to kick this channel off, and I've, I've done an amazing job. I think I've made 46 videos in the last three weeks. Um, really trying to build the momentum. Really want to get that subscriber base, and really want to show you some cool stuff. And, and there's also a lot of things that I'm going to be doing with, with sort of what this channel is going to ultimately accomplish. And I'm going to make a video to talk about that. But right now, we're going to do Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin. Now, this is actually the PlayStation 3 version, so there's some subtle differences. Uh, namely, the enemy placement is identical. This is basically just a consolidated version with all of the DLC, like all three of the DLC areas. And, of course, then uh, the, the, the final kind of Scholar portion. <clears throat> but... Unfortunately, the enemy and item placement isn't different. And when I get the next generation version, which I hope to eventually do, once I can fund that, um, right now this is what I got. So Dark Souls 2 is one of my favorite games. Uh, again, a From Software game, right? I'm playing uh, playthrough Enchanted Arms. I'm playing through 3D Dot Game Heroes. And so you're already kind of seeing the diversity that, uh, that From Software is able to do. Now, just a little bit to kick it off, right? Uh, I'm a huge Souls series fan. I have been ever since I got Demon Souls. I actually owned Demon Souls before I owned a PlayStation 3, and I'd bring it over to a friend's house, and I'd play it there. So I've got a lot of passion for the series, and, you know, a lot of times people talk about, like, the difficulty, like it's, like, a really hard game. I actually don't think it's difficult, right? I think it teaches you how to play it. I think if you come in with the frame of mind that you're going to play it like you play every other game, you're going to do terribly. So... Once you learn how to play the game, once you understand the rules, you understand how you can break them, how you can use them, and how you can uh, benefit from them, actually, right? There's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do in this game. So, anyway, I have a tendency to talk on, so uh, let me not take too long. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press the start button. And, you know, we have, uh, we've heard the sword clashing here. Um, now, this is my first time logging into the game, so it's going to, yeah. All right, there's no new information. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a new game. Yep. All right, we're saving the system data. We're not powering off the system. I'm going to watch the intro. Perhaps you've seen it. Maybe in a dream. A murky, forgotten land. Souls may mend your ailing mind. You will lose everything once branded. The symbol of the curse. The dark side. An augur of darkness. Your past, your future, your, your very light. Very. No, they actually they they did a pretty good job meaning, with this intro. You won't even care. You won't By care then, at all. You'll be something other than human. A spider, maybe? A thing that feeds on souls. A sewing a wheel. Long ago, in a walled-off land far to the north, a great king built a great kingdom. I believe they called it Drang Lake. Perhaps you're familiar. No, how could you be? But one day, you will stand before its decrepit gate without really knowing why. Okay. I mean, that's fine, right? We'll do it. We'll do the thing. On our little boat here. 
And, and she's right. You're basically dumped into the game without really knowing why. You have no context. Um, and one thing to, to mention about this game, and really the Soul series in general, is that it's, it is story-driven, but in a way, the environments and the item descriptions and, and really things of that nature, what you can observe, is what drives the story. The story isn't necessarily driven by cutscenes or anything like that. Now, I realize that this is a cutscene. I realize we've got, what, embers all over the place. Um, you know, there's a lot of themes in the Soul series. Uh, well, Dark Soul series about fires and flames. They did really go all out on the cutscenes for this game. For that is your fate. Yeah, if we compare this the to the one for uh, Demon Souls, cursed. actually, Demon Souls is okay, but it, it, you know, everything from the music to the presentation feels a little amateurish, unfortunately. Um, now, you know, this of course is published by uh, Namco Bandai, and the very first game, Demon Souls. In America, anyway, it was uh, it was published by I want to say Sony Computer Entertainment of America, and you know it was one of those games that actually it got some really interesting reviews, especially for being so low profile. Um, they they drew a lot of uh, I don't know kind of interesting. So I read about it, read about Demon Souls, and they were talking about just how it was so unique in this this sort of quasi online, you know, this passive online component, this active online component. Um, and so if you're not familiar with the Soul series, I kind of don't want to spoil it. I want you to sort of see it firsthand. So, here's our person. We don't know what they are. Uh, at this point, we haven't really made our character yet. And I'm not going to spend too long on the character creator because I know me. And, like, I really enjoy having my character look good. And I always typically make females when I can. I really enjoy that. You know, I don't get to be one in real life. So it's really cool to kind of be one, like, on a game. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm so used to near. I'm like pressing the wrong button already, just to uh, just to try and dodge roll. Yeah, so it's actually circle in this game, and I may end up making that mistake and getting killed really by that more than anything. So uh, I played through Dark Souls before. Uh, that's why I'm walking in the wrong direction. <laughs> well, that's not why I'm walking in the wrong direction. In fact, that should be the reason why I'm not. You know, why I wouldn't be walking in the wrong direction. That's okay. There's a lot of cool stuff kind of around. Um, I can't remember. I feel like there's like hidden items out here. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll grab our first hidden item. <clears throat> Got a rusted coin. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm, I'm getting a little disoriented here. Now there's also, uh, you know, this isn't really meant to be like a playthrough, right? Because it's not a lot of fun when everyone like, when someone's doing a let's play and they know everything. There's a lot I don't know, and in fact, I've never played the DLC. So, there's actually going to be a lot of, like, firsts, uh, but we got to get through the main story first. Um, I may use the opportunity then to kind of uh, highlight some of the co-op and stuff like that. Now, we see these big tracks, and, you know, there's this, there's this big guy kind of just lump, you know, lumbering around here. Hey, how's it going, buddy? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Whatever. I'm not worried about dying. Like, we just started the game. I have nothing to lose. So, cool stuff, right? We'll leave the little ogre guy giant thing to his own devices. And, all right. So, we're already kind of ahead of the game here. We got two items. I actually just... I don't remember what I just picked up, too. That's funny. What do I actually have? Uh, let's see here. Dark sign, gold pine, resin, rusted coin... Okay, yeah. Very cool. All right, we're going to open the door by pressing the correct button and not the circle button like I just did. Getting my X's and O's mixed up. This is what happens when you play a lot of Japanese games, unfortunately. What seems to be the ruckus? Oh, my. Your face. Well, that's Maribel there in the corner. The face of the curse. 
You can actually, uh, well, it's not really a spoiler, but you can, uh, you can get, like, a ladle from her as a weapon. An undead has come to play. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do some Parcheesi, maybe some Japanese Go. All the ones like you. You spoke to that kind old dear, didn't you? <laughs> no, I don't know, did I? I don't, I don't remember doing that. Speaking to a kind you old dear. Finished. Oh, well, I just started, you though. Go hollow. Yay! Yes, you will become one of them. I don't want to become one of them. Hollows prey upon them, feast upon their souls. Oh, maybe it's nutritious. This is the fate of the cursed. <laughs> you know, something to note, actually, in all the Souls games, for whatever reason, people just start laughing kind of randomly. I mean, I don't even want to call it random, it's just, uh, it doesn't always feel like, you know, okay, like, after almost every dialogue, people are just trying to recall your name. Ah, uh, jeez, what should I be? I, I, you know, it doesn't matter, it doesn't show up online or anything useful, so, um, <sighs> hmm. Well, you know what, I am Carl, so I'll just be me, I guess. Whoa, hey, hey, I pressed the R2 button. Oh, it doesn't do the thing. Is it R1? Okay, yeah. Yep, all right. Our old-fashioned way of doing text input here, you know. Uh, you know what? No. You know what? My my character's gonna be female. That's gonna be really irritating. So, um, let's call her. Aha! Yeah. Wait. What? No. Do the thing. Go there, and uh. Do I have uh, do I have more access to like symbols or no? No, not like accents though. Okay, that's fine. All right, so she's gonna be Calane. Okay, cool, Calane. Yeah, I'm sure that's my name. <laughs> At least you know your own name. Yeah, it really puts me in a class of my own. Here's your reward for sharing. Is it a doll? I want a doll. It's a human effigy. Ah, that's even better. Take a closer look. Who do you think it's supposed to be? My guess is a human, but I think you mean the specific think human. Deep into your past. Some really nice depth of field actually going on. Yes. It's an effigy of you. It's all kind of spindly looking. I really like it. And it's actually got the dark sign on it. I never noticed that before. All right, cool. So what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and we're going to body. We're going to gender. We're going to female. Wait, no. We're Wait. Gender? Yeah, okay. Sorry, that was weird. Uh, what do I want? I want something that's a little realistic here. Yeah, you know what? That's fine. All right, physique. I don't really want to be ripped. I want to, you know, I want to actually be able to like, look at myself and like myself. So, all right, homeland. You know what? I'm going to be that. Come on, am I moving too fast for you? Okay, thanks. Well, hold on. Oh, maybe that's a little too much. Come on. Man, this is loading like really slow. Ah! I'm like Ellen DeGeneres here. Okay, you know what? No, that's fine. All right, we're going to hair. And what do I like? Oh, you know what I like the most? I like this the most. And hair color. We're gonna do this. Hold on. Yeah. You know what? Give me an RGB slider. All right, yeah. All right, eyebrows. Eyebrows are absolutely gonna be like, you know, come on. You're not making this easy for me here. No. Okay, yep. Eye color. Eye color is... Let's see here. Okay, yep, yep, yep. A tattoo. Do we want a tattoo anywhere? Wait, how do I, like, control, like, the where that it is? Uh, tattoo. Alright, let me, let me hold off on that, because I just got this big dot on my face. All right, let's go back and advanced settings. 
What I want is I want control over the tone of my skin. Uh, well, actually, no. Yoink. So let's make her a little more feminine. Right? That's what I like. All right, form emphasis. That's fine. Color emphasis. Skin color one. Okay, so a little bit more pale. A little bit brighter. I'm not actually seeing the changes here. Oh, oh my. Well, that was, that was, uh, I'm actually really surprised at the lag here. Okay. Skin tone. All right, I got to give it, a, like, a moment. I guess I'm moving just, like, way too fast for it, which is strange. Because I don't really feel like... I don't really feel like I should be. For it to take so long. Uh, there's a lot of things wrong with my model at this point. Um, all right, so I'm just going to have to kind of uh, guess at some of the things here. So, my lip shape... I really do prefer to have it a little more closed. Lower, uh, concave, convex. Concave, occlusion. Hmm, oh uh, no, fullness. Make the lips a little smaller. Uh, lipstick, you know, I really don't like a lot of this exaggerated lipstick color. I want it to look natural. And I'm also not really happy with the color of my skin at the moment, but that's okay. A lot of people aren't. So, what do I want? Uh, you know, if I can kind of get this to, uh, come on here. Refresh a little bit for me, please. All right, uh, what's up with my, my jawline's okay, actually. What I do want to adjust is my nose. Uh, is that under overall too? Cheek color, laugh lines, hair, hair color. Um, overall color emphasis. I feel like I'm just not seeing myself or like what I actually look like. Okay, now, uh, my jawline's fine for the most part. It's just, it's, uh... It's height and actually the protrusion, I want to drop that like significantly. And it's just, it's it's mildly irritating that I'm not really seeing the change here. So like, I'm kind of blindly making adjustments. All right, hold on, let me like, let me work on that. I'll give it a moment to think here. Uh, but you know, I want to go ahead and I want to be the sorcerer. And I want to get, hmm. Nothing is specifically great to have. Well, you know, actually maybe the petrified something is, is worth having. Yeah, it's worth having, okay. All right, advanced settings. Did my chin ever adjust or anything? All right, fine. So my nose here, uh, we're gonna do nose ridge, wait, no, nose two, uh, nostril width. That's the only thing I wanna drop, really. All right, actually, no, no, no that's a lie. Because my, well, no, no, yeah, that's good. That's good, that's really good. All right, I'm actually like kind of thrilled here. She's gonna be, um, she's gonna be pretty awesome. Uh, she's kind of pretty, right? I think she's pretty. Okay, so, oh, you know what? No, 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 there's one thing I don't like, and that is the tip of the nose, tip height. And maybe the, uh, no, 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 she's good. Well, no. If 
God, I'm gonna fall in love with my character here. All right, so that's great. Uh, let's go ahead and let's uh, let's do this. We're gonna finalize our creation, and uh, I'm trying to remember what her name is now. It was like uh, it wasn't Cecilia at all. Just kind of a I don't know, going off of sort of uh, you know Western European American ish uh, conventions for names. Chance. Well, darn, I hate that I don't stand a chance. You never know. <laughs> You're right. Ha 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 I know nothing. John Go through the door All right. and trot along to the kingdom. Wh which, which button's a trot button? Remember, hold on to your souls. I'll do my very best. They're all that keep you from going home. Well, that's that's oh, disheartening. I'll fool you no longer. You lose your souls, all of them. Not over if I can help it. Over again. <laughs> Might need a toothbrush, though. All right. So, like, what? Uh, and at this point, I still have like cloth on. So when I come here in a moment, will I see myself as me? That's what I'm kind of hoping. I'll just magically change clothing, you know, when the screen goes black. Totally did. All right, yeah, we got a bunch of keys. Um, that's for the DLC. And let me let me take a look at my character. You know, it's not bad. Uh, it's got kind of a Daenerys Stormborn look to her, um, which is cool. I'm a really big uh, Game of Thrones uh, fan in real life. And uh, let's see here. Oh, cool, we got a dagger. I'm gonna break stuff. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open our first treasure chest. All right, we got a human effigy, right? So that kind of defeats, maybe defeats the purpose of uh, grabbing the one from earlier that we saw, or not saw, but like that we had the option. We could talk to Maribel here, um, but really I'm not, I'm not super interested in anything that these people have to say. So instead we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna light our first bonfire. So what are bonfires? Bonfires are basically, uh, they're like checkpoints. And bonfires are really cool. And in this game actually, um, you uh, you can start by uh, or sorry from the beginning of the game you're actually able and capable of warping between bonfires. In the original Dark Souls, that isn't something that you can do, or at least not from the beginning. So we're gonna enter the mist by Stephen King. All right, so uh, you know these these blocks here they tell us some of the basic commands of combat. Now I don't have a shield yet, so there's no point in telling me how to use a shield. Oh, we can examine him though. Oh, no, we can't. All right, yep. He's got a gurgly stomach thing. Yep. All right. Oh, uh, let me think. Let me think. I came in from... Wait, I came in from which way? Uh, Probably this way. Okay, so that's all right. We're going to run a little. Uh, you can run. Um, It does eat up your stamina bar, which actually is... uh. What dictates your your actions uh, and your ability to take action? And you might notice these little ghostly figures here. Those are actually other people playing. Now I don't know that those are truly truly real time when they're just uh, okay. Actually, here it wants to teach me that I can backstab people, and it's a, it's a very satisfying animation when it happens. Honestly, and it's not too bad. All right, so we're gonna go up this ledge. Uh, we're gonna pick up some items. In fact, right here, we got one. All right, got a dagger. Very cool. Now, in the first Dark Souls, actually, you start off and you have to, uh, you have to, um, really, can you aim? Apparently not, apparently not. Yeah. You know what, no, I'm not even playing with you. You're not gonna touch me. I am not interested in being touched. You can touch someone else, you can touch yourself. I don't give a care, but I'm not going to be touched right now. I don't need to take any damage. Let's see how long I can go without taking damage. Uh, you know, not even necessarily how long I can go without dying. And if it's like right now, yep, see it was right now. I think I got hit by that arrow. Well, maybe not. I don't see any damage to my health, but I heard a sound that sounded absolutely like I took damage. There we go. Any more enemies in here? I can't remember, but that's okay. We're gonna basically pretend that uh, that I've never played this before. Oh man, where do I go? Do I go into the mist? Um, 
my sources say yes. Says a magic eight ball. I really probably should confer with a magic eight ball. Let's go over here uh, to this ladder and oh, we're gonna talk to these guys. You give us smooth. Yes, you give us silky. All right. Yep. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give them silky smooth. So I have a petrified something, and so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drop it and leave. Yep, we're gonna leave it. Okay, now, whether or not you consider this cheating, I don't know, but I'm gonna quit out of the game. Save and quit. Yeah, yeah, do that. And so now at this point, uh, it's gonna register that I dropped it. And then I'm gonna be able to pick it up and it's gonna be something new. And it might be a terrible item, it might be a good item. Uh, it's, it's really hard to know. And that's one of the things that's kind of exciting. So basically, you kind of get to trade it uh, for something else. Which is great because, you know, it's not really useful to me as a petrified something. Ah, uh, Kalane. Yeah, that's the name of my character, Kalane. And you can see my uh, my my uh, co-host, uh, his profile there. He's about two hours in. And of course, his, uh, his Let's Play series is up there. Uh, we're hoping to maybe continue that within the next couple weeks. We got some other really cool games to play. Um... A lot of really cool stuff, and actually, I, I kind of want to do some retro stuff, uh, you know, next week. I used to hate that term retro, though. It somehow makes it sound like I'm devaluing the uh, the original games. All right, so we're back in Things Betwixt. And we're going to go ahead and grab that. What is it now? It's a Titanite slab. You know what? That'll come in useful later. We're going to go ahead and we're going to kick this ladder down. No, 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 stop. I want to kick the ladder down. Actually, that, that's his uh, PlayStation Network profile. Very cool. And in fact, whoa. You know, in fact, if you're on PlayStation Network, go ahead and add me. Um, I am int plus one on PlayStation Network. Uh, that is I-N-T-P-L-U-S-O-N-E. I know you'd have no idea how to spell that, but I, you know, I could have meant like the numbers or something, right? But that could have, that could have worked pretty badly. Does that count as damage? Does falling damage count as damage? Because that's not real damage. I, I, you know, I voluntarily took that damage to get an item. All right, anyway, moving forward. We've got 260 souls here. And we have not taken, as far as I can tell, any enemy damage. <clears throat> and I'm a sorcerer, so like I'm flimsy, paper flimsy. That's the way I like it. Um, I already know how I want to build her. And this game's actually got amazing customization options when it comes to your character and like what you can make them into. Uh, what you can specialize them into. It's like any character, you know, classes are not real. Like, right there, classes are just a combination of starting equipment um, and and stats, basically. Oh, oh, that almost worked really badly. All right, yeah. Um, and so, really, anybody can be anything. And, you, you know, really, your starting class is just a way for you to sort of shortcut and, and kick off how you want it. Especially at the beginning of the game, because at the beginning of the game, you don't really have a lot of equipment you can wield, right? Like maybe you don't have the stats for a sword or you don't have the ability to go ahead and um, and equip that shield right away or, or whatever, right? You know, it's either too heavy or, or there's some kind of a, a hang up uh, or reason why you can't do it. Uh, so I could have sworn that there's an item this way, but there's not. But this is gonna teach us that we can do this thing. Yeah, look at that. Oh, right up in your face. And I'm gonna roll. And I'm gonna roll. And I'm gonna strike. Okay, yeah. So I'm a very defensive player. Um, you won't see me do a lot of the um, uh, the parrying. Now, I suppose I could do the parrying thing if I wanted to. There we go. Oh yeah, so that's actually a really fast way to kind of knock open doors. You can begin the, the door opening animation and you can roll into it. Um, and you'll have to forgive me, right? I played a lot of the Soul series, so any of the tick ticks, any of the tips, tricks, whatever, right? You can come to N Plus One channel and we're gonna teach you, or I'm gonna teach you, and you're gonna watch or you're not gonna watch. Either way, I will. I'm totally, totally willing to share it with you at the audience. My only hope is that you'll actually subscribe and comment and give me feedback. Uh, you know, I got some useful feedback today, so that's cool. I really enjoy actually having that because it allows me to sort of tailor the experience and make sure that this is something, you know, that the way I'm doing it is good, right? I kind of feel like I'm gonna end up doing it the way I'm gonna do it, maybe a little regardless, but to some degree, I'm definitely flexible. 
And so, we're going to go through the mist here. And there are some enemies that I can play with, but I don't specifically want to play with them. Um, ow! That hurts! I really don't want to have to use a life gem. I mean, like, I can. It's just at the beginning of the game, they're a limited resource. And if I don't have to heal, I'm not going to heal. And these guys are pretty easy. You know, and I, I say that as I'm, like, taking damage. Um... Well, that's what I mean, though. Like, you know, people are always talking about the difficulty, and I, I sometimes I feel like it's a little elitist, right? Like that. No, you know. Oh my gosh! Now that's funny. All right. So what happened there is I died, and the reason why I died actually is because I I took some fall damage and I I missed my um my overhead stab. So that was an error in my judgment. Right? Like, if this was, like, a perfect playthrough, it's already gone. So I already missed out on some items. But who cares, right? No death runs are no fun. That's not true. They're a blast. But it's not realistic in this kind of environment, uh, in a Let's Play environment. So you may have noticed that that number at the bottom right-hand corner of my screen is now zero. That means that I have no souls. Uh, this is a situation we can remedy pretty easily. In fact, we can go back to our soul stain. All right? That's a great name for a band. And we can uh, we can pick those up. Now those souls, uh, presuming that we can live long enough to pick them up, which we should be able to, but I, you know, I was pretty sure I wasn't gonna get hit at all, and I got hit, so who knows what's gonna actually happen. I'm not gonna make any more guarantees. Uh, you know, and I could, I could use like my, you know, my stuff, right? Kinda take the risk out. But it just feels so cheap to do that. There we go, retrieval. Ah! <laughs> All right, you know what? No, not even playing with you. Da! I'm trying to switch. All right. So, yeah, FYI, don't do what I did, right? So when you try to switch weapons, um, and you're like actually in the middle of getting hit or an animation, it doesn't work. Uh, and, and I'm not really sure why. I mean, I think it's so you can't like kind of combo chain into like other other items that might make things a little unfair, but. Really, I don't know. So we got our souls back, right? But now we're like dead, creepy, like, you know, Daenerys Stormborn who never existed. Like, we're like Daenerys Stormborn if she went through the House of Dead and, well, you know, maybe you've never seen the show or read the books, so maybe I don't want to, like, ruin stuff. Hey, eat my stick. There we go. I forget that I can do that. Uh, there are some items down there. Well, sort of. There's that coffin down there. Um, but yeah, I'm not really interested in changing my gender at the moment, so I'm not gonna go there. Uh, I rather like my character the way she is. She's pretty. Uh, maybe not as pretty right now. She's looking a little, little run down. Maybe a little dead. Uh, probably just need some sleep, right? You know, like all undead, we just need some rest. So let's, let's give her some rest. Uh, we're gonna get to the next checkpoint here, which is going to be in a... Maybe a little bit of a different environment, right? And I'd like to I'd like to talk a little bit about this game too from sort of a presentation standpoint, right? So you'll notice that the area we we're just in was dark. And and I don't know if you noticed, but it's outside. Okay. And well wait a second. Well this is outside too. And what did I do? I walked maybe like uh, sixty feet, okay? And in sixty feet all of a sudden it went from dark and gloomy in an outside lit area to bright and sunny in an outside lit area. Now, how does that make any sense? I think that sometimes people are trying to understand this game wrong. Um, or maybe not wrong, but maybe not from an ideal perspective. So, for instance, I know that I've seen people with map editors and they're showing, hey, you know, this, these areas don't logically connect to each other. And that's true, right? They don't. But I think that they're missing the point. It's not that they're supposed to. Okay, there's a reason why they're not supposed to connect together, and I actually think it's because each one of these areas, each one of these little areas, are actually uh, separate points in time. Uh, I've seen a lot of uh, discussion and evidence for that, but like, all right, so look at this, right? Slightly different lighting, you know? And we, we walked like, you know, again, maybe 50, 60 feet. Um, and we see, you know, we see someone here with the Brotherhood from Final Fantasy X. Uh, for those of you who never played Final Fantasy X, that of course is Titus's weapon. And we can kind of go in here. Now there's some, there are some really hardcore enemies at this point in the game, and I probably shouldn't play with them yet. Cause I think, yeah, whoa. 
Hey, all right, so that's okay. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get out of here. We don't need to play with him right now. Uh, we can talk to that guy, but I'd like to go ahead and at least kind of check into a checkpoint. Um, because I don't want to have to walk through things betwixt again and then pick up my souls and, you know, just on the off chance that I die, right? Because I am a soft, squishy mage. And it, it's just not going to be very helpful. Oh, gosh, look at those. Look at those. All right, so that lighting effect. Um, we can actually see the light like it illuminates things, and presumably it's illuminating dust. In real life, you don't actually see this unless you're inside of, like, a building. But they uh, they have the name um, of God Rays. You know, kind of like it's like the light of God. Um, it is a very, very cool effect, right? It looks really good. And actually, I think that the lighting in this game is phenomenal. And there's an area I'm going to show you shortly that, that kind of highlights that. And for a PlayStation 3 game, actually, I know people are critical about the graphics, but they're actually really good. But this is the perfect spot to stop with Episode 1. Why? Because, well, I'll be honest with you. I've done a lot already, okay? Um, we got through the little beginning tutorial area. We uh, activated our first two bonfires, and we died. That's exciting. I look forward to dying every time I get the chance, because it's going to make me better. But I'll tell you what, uh, I want to thank you for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. I want you to subscribe, I want you to like, and I want you to also like me on Facebook. And then also keep your eyes peeled, because actually in the next week, I hope, uh, I'm going to be making some huge announcements. Uh, we're going to see how things work out. But I have a really good feeling about things. Things are working out pretty well. Um, and, you know, with any luck, actually, it's uh, it's going to be pretty amazing. It's already pretty amazing, right? I I'm, I'm doing something that I always dreamed about doing. Who, who gets a chance to do that? Not everybody. In fact, if you're listening and there's something that you want to do and you have the means to do it, or, or maybe you don't even have the means to do it, but try and explore a way to do it try and find a way to do it make make your life what you want it to be you know, find a way because I'll tell you what once I embrace that frame of mind I was able to do some amazing things all right but I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna get out of here I want you to tune into the next episode I'm gonna be recording it in just a second actually so for me you know like it's not even gonna be five minutes for you it, it might be weeks maybe never right maybe you never get past the first episode that's okay you know what I'm going to talk to you later. Off we to Zane, and go ahead and subscribe.